Uh, done painting for the day. Light me up a cigarette. Got a beer with uh, foil on it. Oh yeah. You can't celebrate your achievements with bad habits, so I didn't masturbate. And I'm going to be painting again tomorrow. Fun, fun stuff. I might have to boycott it. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Look at our neighbors. They don't mow their lawn at all. Mm, it's like a jungle out there. Hey, it's later on in the day. I guess I'm going to tell a little bit about my life. My life isn't really that unbelievable, but there's a lot of things that I've done in my life. I was in the Marine Corps for four years. I worked on a boat in Alaska. I've lived in Seattle, Tennessee, California. But I've been back and forth to Seattle, Washington quite a bit, and Texas. And I've pretty much been to every single of the 48 states and Alaska also. But I haven't been to Hawaii. I, I traded up uh, a trip to go to Hawaii to go to Korea. And I didn't learn any Korean, unfortunately, because I wasn't really trying. Not because I didn't have a chance. I've had way too many jobs. I've worked as a farmer, food service, all kinds of crap. Even as a programmer and everything else. And right now I kind of do odds and ends. Uh, I'd like to get back into programming, but I kind of burnt myself out. Mostly because of my obsessions. I do number theory and I try to crack large numbers. I kind of go at everything with kind of an obsession. And I, I've been kind of slowing things down. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or because, because I have to. I don't know. But right now I'm in Brazil. I'm married. Uh, I've been married for, it'll be 10 years next December. Been married for nine years in a, in a few months. And my wife's birthday's coming up, by the way, so I need to remember that. Right now, I'm waiting for a paper from the FBI, and I just got confirmation today that the FBI actually got something. So that's a good thing. Hopefully, they'll be sending it here soon. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be cutting it really close. It's going to be cutting it really close. So I'm really, really crossing my fingers and hoping they can get it out in time so I can stay in Brazil. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go back to the States, raise more money, and then come back. Other things in my life, I've been homeless before. I'm not even going to go into that. I tend to think in, in re weird ways all the time. Uh, probably like a lot of people do. I, I don't know. I don't tend to go into other people's minds all the time. I probably should, though. It'd, it'd be interesting. I, I like to, uh, to discover people. But I have a really hard time maintaining friends, probably because I move so much. I'm, I consider myself kind of a gypsy because I move so damn much. If I do happen to head back to the States, I was thinking about trying to head to New York, but maybe that's going to cost me a little too much money. I would like to head to New York because I want to see a few people that are there uh, while I'm in the States, if I go back to the States. I'm hoping that I'll get the paper back from the FBI, that way I don't have to go back to the States. Uh, speaking of thinking, today I've been thinking about when one-celled creatures started becoming multiple-cell creatures. You know, it was probably a major flaw uh, when they first started, and it just kind of grew, you know. and, and I'm thinking way back on the chain, way back on the chain. It's just amazing, you know, thinking about these one-celled creatures that, that started working together. And not necessarily because they they wanted to, probably because they had to, because they couldn't separate or something. You know, there could have been a number of re reasons why they started working together and sooner or later became an advantage. It probably happened many, many times before an actual multiple-celled creature could survive and reproduce in some way or another. And later on, you know, way down the chain, then they started coming up with a different types of reproduction. But it's very interesting to think about. So basically, we're just a compilation of all these one-celled creatures that through many, many, many years, they've relied on each other so much that they work together and my left hand really doesn't know that my right hand even exists much less what it's doing it, it all they all kind of work together you know and they're no longer one self creatures they can't survive on their own you can't just well unless you put them in a petri dish or something but that doesn't matter it what matters is that they're no longer uh, individual creatures when they start working together like that they can no longer after so many years of course after, man, the mosquitoes here are insane. But it's just it's just fun to think about things like that and go through the, the evolution of how things work. Well, not even on a scientific level, just, just thinking about it. It's, it's pretty fun. Just imagining how many years it took for that to, to come about. And it's, it's not that it was luck, it's that this worked. So this works and they, they have an advantage over other things around it, so they keep going like that. People like to say, oh, it just happened by chance. It's not that it happens by chance. Nobody rolls a dice. It happens over and over and over again. And what works as an advantage for that species or that animal, and it can reproduce and continue on and can maintain that advantage, it's going to. 
it's not it happens by chance and it's a mutation and and it's more of an advantage so it's and then you also have sexual selection of course and that really doesn't happen by chance because they're actually choosing okay well this one will work for me this one will work for me and now we're more and more complicated that we we look at things that in some ways aren't even related to physical abilities well i'm not even going to go into that actually so but it's just you know it's amazing how things evolve and and how complicated things get really fast well really fast millions of years is really fast but it, it's still interesting to think about and you know it it's fun to think about you know i like thinking about things like that uh, at times, you know, I, I, I don't like getting obsessed with things like that. And I tend to do that quite a bit. So I try not to, I try to think about things in small numbers and I kind of go off on tangents, think about this, think about this, think about this, think about that. And I wonder, you know, do you go out and think, uh, just constantly think about something? My worst enemy in a way is the thing I like the best is number theory. Number theory, I can get obsessed and just think ages about it. I can sl- if I get onto something and, you know, I, I, I have to get to a point where I can disprove it or disprove the the strategy I'm going about or prove it. One of the way I have to do one of the two before I can stop usually or at least show myself that there's no way I can get to it in this this fashion or another. And sometimes I'll go days without sleep, without eating, without anything, just trying to solve this one little puzzle. And... It's very hard to to get me out of that. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So basically, I'm kind of an obsessive freak. So what can I say? But I like thinking about these things. And that's a little peek into my life. It's not too complicated. I like to think of things simply. I like to take really, really complicated things and break them down and play with them like a game. You know, that's why I like math so much. Because for me... The reason I like math so much for me is because there is no memorization. You know, you maybe you grew up, and, and I did too, uh, in classes where you had to memorize this or memorize that. But for me, it was never about memorization. You know, if if they could show me, and this is this is what I liked when they when they gave me a test and they show me an example. The example for me was the best because I, I didn't have to memorize any formula I could derive the formula from the answer that they gave me and I could just ace the test simple as that you know I a, a lot of it was never memorization for me and now I have so many tools in my head that I can derive you know almost anything uh, well you know to a point you know I've had up to calculus 3 so up to calculus 3 I can pretty much derive anything from that. I skipped trig, which was a bad thing, so I had to to kind of, and I don't like to see a formula and not understand it, so a lot of times when I see a trig formula in calculus, I sit there and I, I derive the formula from the geometry that I know so that I can understand what that formula really means. I don't like to look at something and, oh, just use it. No, 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 no. I'd like to know what it means. I like to see, you know, I, I don't like to look at something and uh, you know, like when I'm fixing a car or when I'm fixing something, I like to know how it's working. I like to know what it's doing. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hard time fixing it because all I can think about is, okay, what is, how is it affecting everything else? And so it's going to be really hard for me to fix it because that's all I can think about is how is this going to affect everything else on the car or everything else in the computer, you know. And a lot of times I, I have to go blindly in, but... I always think about that. Oh crap! I'm gonna I, I'm gonna end up screwing up everything. And usually I don't. The things I do end up screwing up are looks. You know, I, I end up breaking some physical feature of something on the outside. And for me, it it doesn't matter so much. For other people, it tends to matter quite a bit. For me, it, uh, looks aren't really that important. For me, to get the thing working is really important. But that's just me. Functionality is way above what things look like. So. If I have a product and it doesn't work, I am going to do what I can to make it work. And I'm going to end this now because this is getting too long.